with an AEW contract reportedly coming up and more, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for September 1st. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Talking about the positive changes to the WWE product, Shayna Baszler revealed on the Believe in Pro Wrestling podcast that talent are excited. If you eat the same meal for a year in a row, it's going to get stale and regardless of how you think the product was, just changing the meal up is like, oh, I can't wait to try this. Maybe you'll hate it. Who knows? There is a moment in time where it's exciting and new. So we're kind of in between where it's like, oh, this is going to be good. And I love what's going on, where you never know what's going to happen now. There's an over overall renewed energy with not just talent and the universe watching but like production and camera crew people and ring crew people when you look at nxt black and gold and you look at recent weeks the company's clearly in good hands with stephanie mcmahon and triple h and nick Khan, there was no moment of transition it was like all right bang and we're off to the races it's been wild Talking to CBS Sports, Theory touched on the retirement of Vince McMahon as chairman and CEO of WWE and mentioned how he was relieved when finding out who'd be taking over. So to me, the first thing you think of is like, well then who's in charge? As soon as I found out who the team was, Stephanie, Triple H, Nick Khan, Bruce Prichard, I have a good relationship with all of them. But I think the Mr. McMahon retirement got a lot of us because, you know, we've seen him forever. He laid the foundation. Literally, there's all these superstars because of Mr. McMahon. I think it was just kind of like, wow, like, that's really happening. So that's kind of where it got me there. But as far as creative in the future, no worries about that. Just because the talent and being with Triple H before and knowing his strategy and his creative power and his direction of how he looks at things not only having him but we have stephanie we have nick Khan, we have bruce pritchard and these are all eyes that are on the game in different ways i think when it comes to that foundation mr mcmahon has laid for us okay here's these people that give us a bunch of creativity and here it is i think it's no better time than now especially given just speaking on the talent that's involved now that's on the roster we have a hell of a roster so it's very exciting to know what the future is and it's going to be very competitive with some stars getting their original names back, Theory told Shaq Wrestling he doesn't want his first name back. I would say no, just because I love Theory. To me, Austin was always the throw on, my first name. Theory is what I created in the backyard as a kid. I love it. Theory, it's all we need. During that interview with CBS Sports, Theory revealed that he's pretty certain he'll face John Cena at WrestleMania. To have that moment with him, the person that I had to put in my own work, but somebody that got me to the dance mentally, it takes the words out of my mouth to think of that actually happening. It's so weird to meet somebody and pretty much have to explain to them, I modeled my whole life after you. It's one of those things as a kid getting bullied, my dad not being in my life a lot, Cena, I could watch him and just escape. It was the connection to his personality. That's something I learned from him. He told me, don't ever think people go out there and want people to connect to their performance. Nobody will connect to your performance unless they connect to your personality. I started thinking, even with that process through NXT to finally being drafted to Raw officially, it was a time to figure stuff out. How can I connect to them with my personality? This is a world in WWE where everybody can kill it in the ring. Everyone can go hard in the ring. So what it's going to set you aside from killing it in the ring. I learned that from him. Talking about the title unification bout between John Moxley and CM Punk on Dynamite, Vince Russo criticized AEW President Tony Khan on his podcast saying, When WCW was kicking our backsides, we never booked that way. We worried about our own house because we knew that if we wrote a good, solid show every week, eventually they were going to tune in. I think it was a definite knee-jerk reaction. All the talk, all the positive talk right now is on WWE, and a lot of the negative talk on the side of AEW. It definitely feels like it was a knee-jerk reaction. They went over a million viewers for the first time in a long time. I've always said this, bro. You've got to be able to sustain that. If they're back at 950,000 viewers next week, then what did it accomplish?
with Sammy Guevara and Eddie Kingston previously getting into a physical altercation that led to the latter suspension from AEW, it's been said by Sean Ross Sapp that their issues have been settled. Fightful has learned that Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara squashed their issues backstage at today's All Elite Wrestling Dynamite show. We haven't learned of the context of what was said, but we're told they had a conversation, shook hands, and decided to move on from the issues that led to Kingston getting suspended for two weeks. Kingston and Sammy were slated to compete at All Out against one another, but it was scrapped after Kingston was suspended. During a promo to build of the match, Guevara called Kingston a fat piece of sh**, which Kingston felt undermined the all-out match that he was set to win. We're told Guevara had voiced his displeasure backstage, and things didn't look like they'd really be rectified until the story emerged, and things actually cooled down after that. One source stated to Fightful that Eddie Kingston accepted full responsibility for his actions backstage. Another said they believe both Kingston and Guevara are smart enough to make money off of the situation and work with one another, and didn't feel as if things ever got so bad that they wouldn't. We were told Guevara was planned for the pay-per-view weekend in some capacity, but haven't learned what that entails. Kingston will face Ishii in a rematch from New Japan on the AEW All Out Zero Hour pre-show. Following his release from WWE, Bobby Fish would sign with AEW in October of last year, but it seems his time in the company is nearing an end, as Fightful wrote. Fish has been missing from AEW programming in recent weeks, and the reason for that is now clear. We're told that Fish's contract is coming up, and he will likely be finishing with the company when it does, with the deal not being renewed. Fish last appeared on the August 3rd episode of AEW Dynamite when the Undisputed Elite returned. Fish, Adam Cole, and Kyle O'Reilly betrayed the Young Bucks to seemingly launch some sort of program, but they haven't been seen since. Fish made his AEW debut in 2021 on the October 6th episode of Dynamite, where he unsuccessfully challenged Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship. He subsequently signed a deal with the company and faced top names like Brian Danielson and CM Punk. After a brief singles run, he aligned with Cole and the Young Bucks before O'Reilly arrived on the Holiday Bash episode of Dynamite in December. Since then, he has competed in several matches alongside O'Reilly in addition to a few singles matches. He has been sparingly in recent months, perhaps in part due to injuries to both Cole and O'Reilly. He last wrestled for AEW at the July taping of AEW Dark Elevation. Fish has been taking bookings on the independent scene. He defeated Yuya at Defy Doomsayers on August 20. Prior to his arrival in AEW, Fish was featured as a member of the Undisputed Era in NXT for several years before he was released in a cost-cutting move on August 6, 2021. There he won the NXT tag titles twice, before that he wrestled for Ring of Honor New Japan. He is a three-time ROH World Tag Team Champion and a two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Champ, among other accolades. Now, it's been reported by PW Insider that as of today, Fish is officially a free agent. Speaking on his new podcast, Undisputed, Bobby Fish touched on a good competitive tension between himself and Dax Harwood backstage, saying, FTR and us, we had a thing, and I won't really get into the details, but Dax and I got into it, and at the end of the day, we were both able to be professional, completely professional about it, but even if we weren't, it's okay, and you could have then put us on TV that night or the following week, and we would have been professional, but there would have been animosity, and there would have been conflict, and still to this day, there probably would be a little bit, and that's palpable, and that's money. If you get two professionals, it won't go someplace it shouldn't, but it can still go to these kind of weird shoot work sort of places that I think the business is missing nowadays. With ringside news previously reporting that the WWE creative team has talked about bringing back Braun Strowman, it seems this is happening as it was said that former WWE Universal Champion Braun Strowman is returning to World Wrestling Entertainment, PWInsider.com has learned. Multiple WWE sources confirmed this morning Strowman will be at this Monday's Raw in Kansas City.
Speaking of returns, MJF has been off of AEW programming since his Pipe Bomb promo asking to be released in the summer. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer mentioned that MJF could make his return at All Out for the Casino Ladder Match. MJF is coming back and a winner gets a title shot. MJF certainly makes as much sense as anyone. I knew MJF's coming back soon, but I don't know if it's going to be this week. He's definitely in the running if you're going to put out odds on something, so he'll be the likely guy. I don't know who's out there on the free agent thing or on the roster who could be the mystery guy. He could pull it off and it could work. If they want him to get into a championship match, this is a way to justify it. Talking about the reason for putting CM Punk versus John Moxley on TV, Fightful said Tony Khan believes that they built more interest and intrigue with the Punk versus Moxley TV match. It created a week of people loudly wondering what was going on and it was a rating success for them. When it comes to a collaboration with WWE, Tony Khan said that when the new regime took over at WWE, he was more optimistic than ever at some kind of collaboration. Now he is less than optimistic at that happening given how they have treated him. Very short answer. And this is your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.